Hey, hello everyone. So it's Tuesday and um, it's my weekly Tuesday vlog. I'm going to start the vlog with uh, an unboxing. I received a, a very large parcel from FedEx and I think I know what it is, um, but I thought I would share it with you folks who might be interested. I know some people like unboxing videos, others are like meh. So I'm going to just start my vlog with that. So with that said, I've got set up on the tripod and um, We'll go from there. Gotta have a trusty knife. Always, always sharp knife. This, this, I've been waiting for, for about two weeks, and I'm so happy it's here. Oh. Oh. Got a better idea. Oh. Kids, when you get in your 40s, you'll understand why you don't want to haul heavy things around. We're going to do this the smart way, not the hard way. try and wrestle that thing out of the box. Uh, this is my much awaited washer dryer unit. And it is, um, it's actually marketed, let me adjust the camera a little bit and um, give you a better view of it here. This is actually marketed for RVs and small apartments. Well, I'm definitely in a small apartment. So for me, this, this is absolutely perfect. I can, um, I can wash dry right here and I have to go out to the laundromat anymore. And you know, going to the laundromat, going to the laundromat isn't so bad, I don't mind it. But here in San Francisco it does get costly and uh, the biggest gripe that I have about going to the laundromat, the number one thing that makes me not want to go is parking. Anyone who's dealt with San Francisco knows that parking here is an absolute nightmare. I'd rather take a public vlogging than have to deal with parking. Um, so this is the this is the washer unit here, and this is the dryer unit here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the camera off the tripod, and bring it over, and give you a closer look. So for those of you who get vertigo with the camera moving around, you may want to just kind of close your eyes for a minute. Okay, so. Let me change the view really quick. Oh, I don't think I can like this. Okay, so the control panel is analog dials, but they're pretty self-explanatory. And then this is the washing part. It's a 15-pound capacity. It's the largest, it's the largest RV type washer you can get on the market. And this is the dryer unit. So it weighs approximately 35 pounds. And as you can see by me standing by it, it really isn't all that tall. Comes up to just like about my mid thigh there. So I'm really happy with that. I think that that was a good deal. I got it on eBay relatively inexpensively. Well, using that term loosely. So, um, hang on a second, folks. something was missing here. So, um, yeah, I'll get that hooked up and then I'm going to start catching up on laundry. I refused to go to the laundromat for the last two weeks because I bought that. Um, not that it really hurt me because I have more clothes than I know what to do with. I could probably outfit a small country. <laughs> um, but yeah, now I can, this afternoon, I can get this hooked up 
probably right in my bathroom. And the thing is, you don't need washer dryer hookups. You fill up the tub manually with, uh, you know, what type of water you want, whether it's hot, cold. My camera's doing something wonky here. Bear with me. It's like loose in the stand. I'm going to fix that really quick. Uh, I'm doing this one-handed because I have Alexis in my other hand. And I'm left-handed, so that doesn't help. There we go. All right. So, <clears throat> yeah. Basically, you plug it into a regular, you know, 110 socket. And um, it's got a drain hose that you can... Um, run right to the bathtub and just drain it out as it cycles through and uh, yeah I'm really really excited about that so um, that will definitely be a well used appliance and the nice thing about it is if I load up the um, camper trailer and I go camping I can take this and I can plug it in with my camper power um, and basically I can wash and dry laundry at any campground because they all have power outlets that you can plug in next to your trailer. So I could do laundry on the road. I wish I would have had this when I um, went back to Indiana for two weeks. It would have been really nice. <laughs> um, but uh, um, yeah, it was a good day of therapy. I uh, made, um, I, I mean there wasn't much headway to make because I've, I've been doing pretty well lately with things. And um, so in talking to my therapist, uh, we're on track. Um, surgery's still on track. I have my consult um, on June 21st. Um, my um, my surgeon, Dr. Shaw, is going to examine, you know, um, to make sure the electrolysis is on track. Uh, but my electrologist told me this week when I went in, as a matter of fact, Saturday when I went in, um, that I'm at the point now where I don't have to come in every week. I can come in every two weeks because they pretty much have the surgical site clear now it's just um, maintenance on little spots that come in so that's a really good sign basically um, the last thing that my surgeon and I were waiting to do was to uh, let the do the electrolysis and get the surgical site clear of all hair um, and I think once my surgeon evaluates me you know in a couple weeks and sees the progress made you know, we should be able to set a definite date and that's basically the availability of the OR and the surgeon's availability, and I, I think, um, I, I'm pretty sure it'll be December based on what uh, Dr. Shaw was telling me, but it could be sooner, it could be a little later. I'm hoping for the sooner. It would be really nice since I've had such amazing progress with electrolysis, if I could even get it sooner than December, that would be awesome sauce. Um, but I'll be happy if it's in December because you know before the end of the year it would be really nice it would be really super nice to start out 2018 as, as my authentic me and the right body um, because I think that for me that'll be really the last big step with all of this you know the nightmare will come to an end and uh, I'll just get to focus on living after that so um, that's where it's at so we're gonna do therapy once a month instead of every two weeks um, notwithstanding if I need to go in, if like um, I have some kind of crisis or something, um, then then I can go in as needed. I can call my therapist and make an appointment. Um, so um, that's really good progress. We're happy with that. Um, still teleworking and I'm liking it. Um, and I think that's that's about it for this vlog. Not a real long one, but not really a whole lot of new uh, stuff to talk about in my life. So, um, with that said, oh, yeah, any of my peeps watching this out in the East Bay, if you see any nice two-bedroom units, uh, apartments, condos, duplex, townhouse, whatever, um, hit me up on a private message. I'm looking to um, relocate over to, like, the... Um, somewhere between, like, Orinda, Lafayette, Walnut Creek, and Concord that area in the uh, in the East Bay um, and just uh, tell them to commute and then commute a couple days to work. Uh, I really need to get a larger place um, because um, with my daughter coming to see me more, um, I just need a bigger place. <laughs> um, this place is, is cozy for me, but for two people it's just not, it's not cutting it. Um, so I'll continue my search um, and I'll be looking over that way I'm hoping by by the end of July at least, maybe sooner, to be moved and situated in the East Bay 
and um, get everything sorted out. So hopefully um, the next time that my daughter comes out, I don't think I'll make it by the time she comes in mid-July, but hopefully like if she comes out for um, like winter break or Christmas or something, I'll be long situated in a two bedroom and then she'll have a room she can camp out in that kind of thing um, when she comes to visit. So, um, <clears throat> but that's, that's where it's at. I think Alexa's about to shed. Her eyes are getting all glossy and her skin's getting really dull or her, her, um, her scales look like they're about to flake. So I'm hoping in the next couple days to a week she molts. I tried to feed her two days ago and she killed the mouse, but she wouldn't eat it. And then, so I froze it, and then last night I thawed it, and I did the, you know, the, the forceps and jiggled it, and she struck it and held it for a minute, but then she didn't eat. So I don't know if it's because if the mouse is a little too big for her, or if it's because she's about to molt and she's not wanting to eat. Um, I'm going to give it a couple days. If she molts, I'm going to chalk it up to that. And uh, But I think I'm going to put her back on pinky mice, because I gave her an actual furry mouse at her last feeding, and she ate it. But um, it took her quite a few days to um, to get back to normal. I think it took a lot out of her to process and digest that mouse. Hey, sweetheart. Um, so, but she did fine with pinky mice. So I think I'm gonna instead of just you know giving her a large furry mouse, I'm gonna give her one or two pinky mice, probably two pinky mice, and I think that'll do the trick because she's so tiny, she can't really handle anything super big. So, isn't she adorable? This is my favorite therapy pet ever. Um, because she's so docile, she just likes to snuggle and hang out. Um, boa constrictors have a bad name, but this one, this breed only gets to be two feet long, so she's pretty much, she's pretty much fully grown, or just about fully grown at this length here. She's about 18 inches, so about maybe six more inches to go if she grows, you know, fully at two feet. And um, this is about as fat as she's gonna get, and you can see um, if you look at my finger and you look at her, she's not that much more in diameter than my finger, so very harmless, um, unless you're a small mouse. And, and if she's hungry, uh, you're in the wrong place. But for people, this breed is actually very docile. This is one of the best breeds to have as a pet, uh, from my research, um, because they're not aggressive to people and they're not aggressive to children. And a lot of children like them because they're so small and they move slowly um, and that's why I like her because she's just very docile and it's kind of therapeutic to have her uh, especially at night when you're just sitting there and there's not much going on and she's just chilling out um, she's getting to the point now where when I first got her she would want to constantly move in my hands but now she's getting to the point where she's just kind of slowing down or chilling out she's not as um, anxious I think as she was when I first got her so I think she's finally just getting used to me my pheromones my scent um, the way my skin feels that kind of thing so uh, and I really enjoy having her around I can understand now why my grandpa really liked having his boa constrictor and maybe it runs in the family I don't know but I'm definitely a fan of of Alexis and they have a lifespan of 15 to 20 years so if I take care of her right she'll be around until I'm well into my 60s. <laughs> I'll be a grandma. <laughs> she'll be kicking. She'll still be kicking. So anyway, with that, I'm going to wrap this video up and get it uploaded and uh, start my laundry. <laughs> All right, folks. I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll try to vlog again next Tuesday and stay on schedule. But if not, I'll definitely keep updates going. But um, these Tuesday vlogs really work well for me because it's kind of a, a routine for me and I like routines. So anyway, I love you. Alexis loves you. Be safe and uh, have fun. See you next time.